Good day and welcome to Samsung Display Company. Today, the head of our marketing department will demonstrate the way they come up with names for monitors. Hello, my name is OD Say. We have a lot of models and I will only name the most popular ones. <clears throat> GeForce RTX 4070Ti Super Gaming Pro OC Yes, this is a real GPU name. I know, many people are fed up with all these names and the fact that they're deliberately trying to confuse us. Just take a look at the situation with process nodes. It's called Intel 7 and it is 10 nanometers, how about that? Not even talking about marketing teams just smashing their keyboards when coming up with names for monitors. They've already confused themselves. AMD rolled out the Ryzen 9 7940HX mobile processor this year. Although, according to the new rules, CPUs released in 2024 should have their names starting with an 8. Let's talk about how we got to these puzzles in the names of processors, video cards, and everything else. And how not to fall for the marketing tricks of electronics companies. This is MK, my name is Mikhail Krashen. Today we will try to understand how and why they are trying to confuse us. Let's go. Just remember how well it all started in the 90s, when engineers kept marketing teams away from their products. If you need to know the parameters of your CPU, just look at it. The clock speed and even the cache volume and the bus are indicated right there, it has all you need. Today, both Intel and AMD write only the name on their products. You want more details? You're a modern person, aren't you? You've got internet right in your pocket. Which one is better, the RTX 4070 Super or 4070 Ti? There is no way to figure this out unless you search for it. Both indices definitely sound cool, so you need to Google. Sometime in 2005-2006, users needed to figure out which one was faster, the GeForce 7800 GDX 512, the GDX, GS or GT. The 7900 had five options, they also had a GDO. The situation gets even worse if you look at the full names of RAM kits. For example, for Kingston, the numbers at the end of the model name indicate the quantity of modules and their total volume, but Adata doesn't have this. Looking at their names, you can only guess the frequency and the volume of one module. The rest of the numbers also mean something, but each manufacturer has its own way. And it's just unrealistic to try and remember all of them. Monitors, however, got the worst. At best, a couple of digits in this gibberish will give you the diagonal. And even then, you still need to guess which numbers to look at. The rest of the character set doesn't mean literally anything to the average user. While actually, it is quite possible to encrypt the refresh rate and panel type there as well. Nvidia stickers on laptops just don't have anything. They don't even tell you about the generation of your GPU. And the names of laptops do not shed any light at all on the release year or hardware or on the diagonal. But the real fun begins when marketing teams decide that they can fix the naming issue. Take the mobile Ryzen CPUs. Initially, there were no problems with their names. The first digit always meant the generation. The second, the tier of the chip. The last two digits were most often zeros, and sometimes there was a 5 for the refresh versions, so they were just there. The only exceptions were in the Ryzen 5000U lineup, where a couple of chips were actually relabeled solutions from the 4000 series. But mostly, the logic of the names was simple and clear, and to determine the approximate performance level of an AMD processor, all you needed to know was two digits. In the 7000 series, AMD changed everything. Now, the first digit is the year of release, however, 2023 is not 3, it's 7, which means that 2025 will be 9, and then, then they'll just come up with something else. The second digit is the tier in the lineup, here nothing changed, everything is the way it was. The third digit is architecture, 4 means Zen 4. Makes sense, however, there's still Zen Plus and Zen 3 Plus. But maybe the marketing team didn't know about it, so everything is mixed up now. The last figure shows whether this is the older or the newer model in the lineup. Managed to memorize? No? Neither did AMD. So in just a year, the new Ryzen CPUs broke this magnificent logic. And I'm sure they had a good reason for that. Speaking about Intel's naming, 
they've got some global reforms going on. This is done in order to emphasize the importance of the fact that their new chiplet solutions are made in USA. For the first time since the 90s and 486s, Intel chips are being manufactured in the States again. So for this, the company decided to start from scratch. And in order to separate them from the truly first generation core from 2009, the marketers decided to simply remove the letter I from the index, at the same time adding the buzzword Ultra to the name, so there are no more I7s. Now just Core Ultra 7 or Core 7. So which one is better, the Core Ultra 5 or Core 7? The first one is formally lower in the lineup but with a premium prefix. There is no answer just yet. Officially, Intel only introduced the new naming system, and all current Meteor Lake CPUs come with the Index Ultra, so the new charade by Team Blue is to be expected. But even the current processors already have naming problems. Take for example the Core Ultra 5 125U and 134U. Formally, the second one has a larger index and should be faster. But in practice, with the same set of cores, it has lower frequencies and less maximum memory, and the TDP is almost halved. That is, in real-world tasks, the lower tier 125U processor will be significantly faster than the 134U. But there are also examples of good naming. Take, for example, Wi-Fi. Five years ago, we were wondering which one was better, 802.11n or 802.11ac. In 2018, the Wi-Fi Alliance gathered and decided. Now they will use simple numbers instead of these incomprehensible sets of numbers and letters. And it works just fine. It is obvious to everyone that Wi-Fi 5 is worse than 6, and Wi-Fi 7 is the newest and the most advanced. The Koreans from Samsung are also no strangers to logic. The last few years, the flagship Galaxy S phones have been having names corresponding to the release year. For example, the latest and greatest flagship device released a couple of weeks ago is the S24. Everything is simple and clear. With power supplies, everything is also simple. Here, most of the manufacturers indicate the most important parameter, the wattage, right in the name. Android and iOS versions make sense too. A new version is released every year, and no one has any difficulties understanding that Android 14 is newer than 13. And Android 4 can't launch WhatsApp on your grandma's phone. So why do some manufacturers use clear and logical names, and others are trying to go out of their ways just in order to confuse us? Probably they got something to hide. AMD did not just come up with a new processor labeling system in the Ryzen 7000 lineup for no reason. Suddenly, it turned out that half of the chips were based not on the newest Zen 4 architecture, but on older Zen 3 and even Zen 2. Buyers who are used to not looking at the last two digits easily fall for this bait. We would believe that the Ryzen 7020 differs only slightly from the 7040, but in fact, there's a gap of two generations between them. Why is AMD doing this? Of course, in order to sell old chips under the guise of new ones. The situation with Intel is quite similar actually. The Mobile Meteor Lake processors came out technologically advanced, but in terms of performance, they are not much faster than their previous gen chips, and the new Ryzen's are often way ahead. So what's the way out? Of course, just name them as pretentiously as possible. By the way, it's easy to determine the age of Intel's marketing personnel. Only people born in the 2000s can abandon the legendary Pentium and Celeron brands. How could they just rename them to Intel N? But not to be confused with the N300 and 305. This is the i3 lineup, which, let me remind you, was abandoned by another team of Intel's marketers. And it's quite clear why Nvidia went so super. There was a crypto mining boom and out of the habit of making loads of money, the company raised prices for the top-end RTX 40 cards, explaining this as an additional payment for technological advancement. But the crypto mining boom is way behind and the GPU market has been favoring Team Red, which offers significantly higher performance for the same price. And there's also Intel with their ARC GPUs that are not so bad as it turned out. Recently, Nvidia has been getting tons of money coming from solutions for AI acceleration, so it's time to change something. Get the Index Super out of your dusty cellar, roll out three upgraded cards, which are faster but at the same price, and in the case of the RTX 4080 Super, the price is even lower. Profit. In the context of this struggle for customers' wallets, it becomes clear why some companies, on the contrary, change their labeling to something more understandable for users. The Wi-Fi Alliance is a monopolist in its field, 
No one else offers fast wireless data transmission. Therefore, it makes no sense for them to scare off buyers with incomprehensible indices. And power supplies for most users are just black bricks. And reviewers with their incomprehensible DC-DCs, transformers, and shot key diodes are techno mages. Therefore, the manufacturers are not trying to confuse us and almost always honestly indicate the most important parameter, the wattage, right in the product name. One thing is sure, the longer, the cooler, and more confusing the title, the longer it will take to figure it all out. Bold claims that our processors have become two times more technologically advanced are often accompanied by a small text about the fact that this does not apply to everything, and actually there are twice as many AI units in it and that's the difference. According to the laws, manufacturers are required to report the full technical characteristics of their products. So AMD decided not to wait for lawsuits, and honestly indicated all the small Zen 4C cores and doesn't even add them to the big ones. For example, the 8500G has 6 cores, but only 2 of them are big. The way I see it, the purpose of all these updated names and obscure indices is to confuse us. Now, in the times of constant refreshes, it is not uncommon for an older processor to be no worse than a more expensive new one. Therefore, carefully study the parameters. This was MK. You can decrypt it as my computer or my name, Mikhail Kroshin. I'll see you later. Bye.